you're enjoying Shannon Confidential podcast episodes, please visit my Patreon account. I'd love to continue doing this with you. Hey, everybody, look down below. See the subscribe button? Go ahead and press it. Thank you so much for all of your support. Welcome to Shannon Confidential. I am Shannon, your host. And Shannon Confidential is a podcast about life, love, and everything in between. And part of the in between today is love. And it's about intimacy, fulfillment, uh, couples therapy. And, you know, intimacy is kind of important as far as I'm concerned, anyway. And Ray Grillo is our guest, and she is going to be talking about how she's a life coach, she's a podcaster, she's also a medium, meaning she's psychic. So uh, maybe she knows some things, you know, and she talks to you and teaches you and couples you and talks about her podcast. She seems incredibly interesting, and she's got an amazing backstory. So I cannot wait to bring you Ray Grillo. All right, welcome everybody. This is Ray Grillo, the person I just told you about in the intro. She seems like she's going to be amazing to talk to you today, so I cannot wait. Ray, thank you for being a guest on Shannon Confidential. Welcome. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be sharing whatever I have to share today. <laughs> yeah, and it's a lot. So tell everybody where you came from and what brought you to doing what you're doing. To just tell them who Ray Grillo is first, and then we'll go into all the stuff that you're a part of. Okay. Uh, well, Ray Grillo, and uh, I am from Las Vegas, Nevada, born and raised, native. I grew up uh, like on the east side of Las Vegas, which uh, is, you know, lower, lower class. And um, that is where like I grew up. And that's where I ended up meeting my husband, which is where I'm like going to share with you guys is that I am a coach, a life and love success coach, where I help people um, develop loving, intimate, and fulfilling relationships in their life. And my husband, I feel, was the beginning of my own spiritual awakening, and our relationship really was the catalyst for what propelled me to strive and to become who I am today. And I am the owner of Lennon LLC and Lennon is my son. Um, and I also am the owner of Goddess Glow. And so I really work on helping people become confident with themselves. It's something that hits home for me because I've always been such a people pleaser uh, in my life. And um, I, I say recovering people pleaser. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's good. <laughs> yeah, recovering people pleaser. And I uh, love to help people not people please anymore and not to do self abandonment. And that's uh, sort of who I am. And I am just a, I don't know, like I like to see myself as like a beacon of light for other people and like within my friend group because that's just what I strive for. And I know that when I'm my best self and I really love and care for myself, that I'm able to help others the way that I can by just being me <laughs> and being my best self and like being able to influence people in that sort of way versus um, just like telling. <laughs> yeah, um, no, I love that you said about the whole people pleasing thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just me and, and you're going to get this because obviously you're a recovering people pleaser. Mm -hmm. It's never been in me to just do things I don't want to do or say yes to things that I, I mean, I say yes to things that I don't necessarily always want to do, but sometimes you just kind of, that's just life, but yeah. it's never been in me to be other than me to please someone else. Because I just, I never understood that because inside right. it's, it takes stuff out of you. You have to do it at certain points in your life 
just because that's, you know, you have to give life is a give and take, yeah. but people who succumb to that and do all that. And, and I have friends that have, you just hear how unhappy they are. And don't you feel bad for people who live that type of lifestyle or, and now you're in recovery. It's just, it's so much better finding that happy medium. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say that I feel bad. Um, it's just, I just know that's, sh- where they are in their journey. I, and I feel like a big part of that is coming to the acknowledgement of and accepting like, Hey, like this is where I'm at right now. However, is it effective for me? Does it work for me? And does it get me to where I'm, what, to what I'm desiring? And I feel like that's like the biggest thing is, yeah, is coming to the acknowledgement that, um, that, Hey, I'm, pleasing other people and I'm abandoning myself and a lot of the times too I I guess like yeah this is the part where I wouldn't so much say I have empathy I have empathy for people who do this because I was there and a lot of the times they people don't know themselves because they've been so conditioned to be everything that they're not and and so that's where um, the story ties in with my husband, my husband, I'm a widow. Um, and, uh, Very sorry to hear that. Number of 2019. And my husband had narcissistic personality disorder. I uh, was in a pretty, like, it was a pretty abusive relationship. However, I just kept giving and giving and giving of myself until I couldn't anymore. There's nothing left. There's nothing left. And, um, and I didn't know who I was. And so that me leaving, I left my husband back in like December, se- September of 2018. Like we just separated. We stayed married. Um, Cause I just believe that, you know, for me anyway, that I believe that, Hey, I committed to this, like till death do us part, you know, unfortunately that's what had happened. And, um, and so along my journey, I just, you know, I really lost myself. And it was through that where I was like, I need to figure out who I am, like what I stand for, so that I don't have to deal with this anymore. Like I, I, t- I got to a point in my life where I had to take responsibility of what I was doing and stop playing this victim role where I just kept being like, I'm a victim, I'm a victim of abuse, I'm a victim of narcissistic abuse, I'm a victim to my mom, to my life, to whatever, and it's like, I have my three, year at the time, he was like two, three, uh, my son, and I'm like, I have to take care of this little human, you know, this wonderful, great little thing, and I couldn't do that with when I just kept people pleasing everyone. I just was so drained and so tired all the time. Yeah, this is this is your comeback story. Finding who you were and then finding all the strength and the power in that to then pay your new knowledge forward. A mm-hmm. lot of people just don't recover. Or if they do recover, they recover and just go on their, their way, which there's nothing wrong with that. But when you can recover and figure out who you are and then figure out a way to pay that forward and to educate and and provide that knowledge to somebody else who might be where you once were i think is just huge in the whole human world mm-hmm. yeah i um i'm very big on giving back i'm extremely huge on it and i am extremely grateful too because i I took a lot of leadership roles throughout my life and I did stuff like student council. I have done like seminar stuff as a teenager and leadership um, classes. However, when I left my husband, I sort of was, I was like, I don't know which way to go. Yeah, what do I do now? (laughs) I don't know which way to go. My employer though, put me into a seminar because I became the lead like head of the department for floral at the time. If you're a floral designer, you will know that <laughs> that is a lot of work, a lot of hours. However, uh, I was just so happy because I like I was 23. I was running one of the greatest and Vegas's best floral department in a wedding chapel on the Las Vegas Strip, and um, and so beautiful. 
yeah, they put me through a seminar training and that really showed me a different way of thinking. And that is where I became aware, you know, my employer, amazing. I still talk to him today. I love them and so grateful for, <laughs> for them. However, they have this concept called, get, called giver's gain. And um, it's like giving unconditionally, not just to the world, however, to yourself. That is what I found for me brings in abundance. You know, that is yes. being abundant. And uh, when I share my insights and share who I am, I just know it makes my life better because I'm giving, I'm just giving to give versus you know, getting to give so or like to get something. However, that's sort of like where an abundance mindset comes for me. And I think about how, you know, there everyone's a leader. It just depends on what you're leading people to, what you're influencing people to do. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. I just know that God brings in people who do inspire me. I just attract it. And yeah. I just keep an open, open mind and mind open heart. You know, I can help some, yeah, open heart. And if I'm able to influence people to also share their story and to share themselves and to share their light, then that is part of my giving. That's see, that's so beautiful. And I just truly believe that when you start giving back and as giving of yourself, giving that positive energy, that, that, that light, mm -hmm. the universe just works in an amazing way back to you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's anybody who's in, has experienced that will know exactly what I'm talking about. And those who haven't just try it. It's truly remarkable. What kind of that positive, loving, open heart energy. Um, you just, it's almost like you get rewarded for being just a good person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And for being yourself. Yes, that's just it. Be yourself. We are mm -hmm. at our best when we're at ourselves. You know, that, that it, there's so much self-confidence that comes with knowing who you are, accepting who you are, and being able to just walk chin up, chest proud. It's remarkable. Um, your whole life changes when you have that type of inner love. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. how else to put that. I'm not a Hallmark card, but this is yeah. kind of how I feel. <laughs> So how did you get into then taking, you know, what you had been through and then turning it into a, you're an entrepreneur, you know, you use this, this beautiful way of coaching couples, um, yeah, as you can see behind me, how did you decide to go that direction? Because that's a big step, especially when, you know, we, like me, I'm on my second part of my life now. My my first marriage is behind me. Mm -hmm. So then to become a coach that helps couples, that's that's a great deal of confidence it takes to then say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach you guys my cliff notes. This is what you don't do. But so how did you decide to go into that? Well, it was more recent and then again it was just uh going through I guess like my journey because I started off with just focusing on abundance. And then I realized for me, there was a lot of healing that I had to do dealing around people and relationships. And I realized that relationships are honestly the greatest mirror <laughs> or it's like the greatest mirror to your own internal reality, because like, what's the point of having a relationship? You know, like wh wh what's the point of it? Is it just to be cheery and happy all the time <laughs> I, I don't think so and so um relationships I feel the point of having them is to grow alongside with someone and that could just be not just like your life partner however it could also be with anyone having really being in relationship with anyone I remember when I was younger too, that I didn't have a lot of great relationships. I never set those boundaries and stuff. And I, there was a period of time where I just felt lonely. Mm. Um, and I knew that was a comfort, zone, a comfort zone for me to stay around people who, you know, made me feel comfortable. Okay. Um, however, I've noticed when you, you know, live a life, uh, like 
pushing past your boundaries and especially within relationships and you're able to I don't know sort of cultivate an environment so where you're able to talk things out with people or you have like a certain standard with people that that is where you get the most like fulfillment that's where you get the most growth and learning with women exclusive no two years ago I started working with just women exclusively when I started along my journey and it wasn't until I was challenged by a coach there and she was like well why don't you help men I'm like well you know I feel (laughs) this sort of way and I realized at that point that what I had to share could go to everyone whatever I was sharing whatever I was talking about on my podcast and stuff it could go for everyone and even um, when I started making guy friends, how I realized that for me, I was being avoidant of not pursuing relationships with any man because I was afraid of what happened with my husband. You didn't want it to happen again, so let's just avoid it completely. Yes, exactly. I, um, however, I'm raising a son. <laughs> and um, that, it like clicked to me when she was like asking me these questions. I was like, oh, well, I'm going to figure this out. And um, yeah, yeah. instead of working exclusively with women, I was like, I can, I can help men too. I just need to keep pushing myself and keep being uncomfortable in order to heal. Mm -hmm. When I say like pushing and stuff, also healing parts within me um, and my masculine energy within me to where I wasn't afraid of men anymore um and those beliefs you know they can stem I don't know if you know anything like programming um you know your brain the beliefs that you have about just life in general uh and like reprogramming and reframing those beliefs and thoughts to where I can just love anyone Yeah. Uh, yeah and um I just realized that I didn't know either until I actually joined the uh, Latter-day Saints Church, so okay. the LDS Church, uh, what to do for men. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to help them. Like, I don't know, like, what they need, you know. And I wasn't- yeah, there's certain people that say you can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, it wasn't until I joined that where it, like, literally, one of their, like, doctrines say, um what the men should be doing and then also what the women should do should be doing so, so what is that what the, i'm curious on that what is that what so, should the men be doing and women be doing is that to help each other yeah to mostly help each other also the family unit okay. is the first community unit in that you're going to be born into and when the family unit is healthy that's when there can be world peace and so i was always saying before I joined the church for women, and I was just like, I don't know what men need to do, however I know what women need to do. And that's when women raise their standards, that's when uh, men are gonna have to up their game. Yeah. And then also when women do the healing work and they up their standards, they're expecting more out of men. They're not just like allowing um, men to get away with what have you, like leaving, you know, the family unit and because a lot of our programming starts when we're children from the ages from zero to six is okay. majority like 80 percent of our programming our conditioning our habits are created at this time in our lives even when we're in the womb so if there, it's chaotic and hu- unhealthy you're going to be more so in survival mode versus thriving and you're going to pick up conditions for you throughout your life where you're just going to live unconsciously and you're going to do the things that you do since you were six and under. Um, and it's that's where we pick up 80%, like 80% of our programming. And you know, we run off of our habits with 95 to 99% of the day yep. of our lives is unconscious. On so autopilot. Like, yeah, we're always on autopilot. And we're a bunch of big kids. <laughs> you know, yeah, because like, everything, so. think about that. If that's the time frame where you're learning everything, 
Mm-hmm. You're you're not doing anything based on your own decision. You're, uh, most of your habits are habits that were taught to you. You didn't even create them, and then you follow them every day. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. So um, that's where that's what I came to believe is like my truth and what I wanted to help people do because I believe if you know, you're a conscious person or you're working and striving to be more intentional and more conscious within your life and you attract a more conscious partner, Yes. then you raise consciously aware children. And then that in turn helps the world because it's, it's a better hard. cycle. <laughs> yeah. It's a better cycle. Yeah, yeah. That it's, I, you are so absolutely right because I do believe a lot of the issues today, whether it be world issues, you know, I'm not going to go preaching or anything, or just relationship issues is the disconnect of that family unit that whether you liked if your parents were strict or not strict or just being there and being home and being together and being a team, teaching Mm -hmm. your children, wanting them to be better, wanting to learn the value of the dollar, wanting them to just learn that that family unit, I think has been so watered down and lost Mm -hmm. And that just starts a whole other level of issues that rise up. So when you bring back that family unit, that family respect, the respect for husband and wife, man and woman, and then the little kids see that when you're teaching them their new habits, they're seeing Mm -hmm. better habits. And it just, it, it elevates everybody, children, Mm -hmm. mothers, fathers, couples, and that elevates how you're going to react in the rest of the world. So there's so much truth in what you're saying that just everybody's got to reverse it and come back together. (laughs) Yeah, do the healing work. Um, I'm really big on inner child healing. I feel like that's uh, where like my main focus is, is, you know, going back and doing or helping people do guided meditations to where it brings you back to memories that you've had as a kid. Um, or things and like reframing different beliefs that you have and doing that sort of work is that inner child healing to me and um, there's like another thing called shadow work however inner child healing can help and benefit so much and that's something you do in part of your your practice Hmm. with with couples or individuals yes yeah more so Mm -hmm. okay so I have to ask you now that you know you're you're a coach and you've worked with men, women, couples, you have the inner child healing. What is, what is your, I I don't want to say your preference because that's kind of asking that something isn't your preference, but what is the difference between coaching a female, coaching a male and coaching couples? Because to me, I find it fascinating. So I'm just Mm -hmm. curious. Well, I do. I'm more so, to be honest, I really like to focus on the individual. Okay. Um, because again, I feel like relationships are mirrors. And so when I have talked to couples, I have talked to them individually. And then I also come together and like when they're talking together, um, if there's issues that arise, then working through that. However, typically when I talk to them individually first and like get things done and like maybe give like a different perspective or you know, it seems like they come back together, work things out (laughs) because they have a change of perspective. And I feel like that's like the biggest thing is having that change of perspective. You probably see that light bulb go off going, oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Um, A lot of it and a lot of issues stem from like, you know, stem from self. And so it's like either people are like projecting their insecurities or worries or they're assuming or what have you. And it's like, well, you know, this is my stuff that I'm working on and also helping couples decipher, like, what's your stuff? Like, what is the stuff that you're working through? And like, what is your couple? Like, what is your significant other? What is it? What is their stuff? Because we can think and assume that people think like us. However, that's typically (laughs) never the case. No. (laughs) It's not the case because everyone has different events that, you know, happen in their life. Um, And I know I've worked with a lot more women than I have with men. Um, I have noticed that, again, women are um, 
a lot more emotional. (laughs) And so it's like, you know, working with men, helping them get more accepting, more acceptance of self and um, allowing them to just be in a place where they're at. While women, I've noticed, is like sometimes women, they want to have sort of a more of a lead. They want someone to lead. Um, They still come up with their own answers. You know, I feel like every great coach allows for the answers to come out of people on their own. However, I have noticed women, like they want a little bit more guidance than men. And then men typically come up with their own answers. It's just about asking the right questions. Yeah. Yeah. And I know as like a woman coach, I feel that I've seen anyway in my field. And when I was doing research that there's a bunch of men out there coaching a lot of women, how to get into a relationship. This was like another finding that I found to get into relationships with men. However, there's not a lot of, and then there's also a lot of women talking to women. There's not a lot of healthy, awakened, masculine advice out there. I feel like a lot of it is dealt with like hurt. It comes from a hurt place. Okay. And it comes from this um, notion that men just need like the materialistic items versus healing. And once, if you have all this material, like merit- materialistic things and you're of high value, then, um, then you will, you know, get all the women or what have you versus actually, you know, diving in and working on yourself and coming from a place of integrity and being your most authentic self and being vulnerable and strong in that aspect um, and wanting to have like a partner beside you. And I've noticed that that I feel is where it's lacking for men. I would, I have to agree, with that. I would agree with yeah. that. And I've noticed too, since I'm raising a son, that men, I was, because me, you know, I go through my own stuff and my own imposter stuff. I'm like, I'm a woman. I'm like, I don't want to give advice to men. And then I was like looking around, I was like, there's a bunch of men giving advice to women. Like, yeah. there's, there's going to be some men who are turned off by listening to other men for one, because, you know, pride or ego or what have you. Mm-hmm. And then two is like, well, I'm a woman and I know what I want. Like, I know what I'm looking for. And so men, um, I've noticed since I've been sharing, they are gravitated towards the message that I have. I have a lot of men now in my DMs being like, thank you so much for this change in perspective. Um, Or, you know, just being grateful for what I do have to share. That's wonderful. It's got to make you feel good inside because you know that you're affecting in a positive way other people and their relationships, or the, even just the ability to get into a relationship, that's got to make you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love love. <laughs> I love love. Well, okay. So going on love and I'm going to just like do a hop, skip and jump to intimacy. Okay. Do you find that the happier people are in a relationship that helps the intimacy part? Because I do, and I can only say listening to some of my friends over the years, that too was something they, they could love their husbands or, or their husbands love their wives, but there was that lack of those intimate moments and that intimacy. And does that, when you clear the air and give people a different perspective in their relationship, does that then bring them open up that intimacy again? Cause I think that's an, a um, very important part of a relationship. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's extremely important. However, I wouldn't necessarily say when they're happy, that intimacy is, um, you know, blossoms. I would say, uh, of course, like, you know, you can either live like on a flat line, you know, however, a flat line is sort of like, okay, well, you're dead or, or numb no. or you can, like, you know, have, you, it's like you have your lows and then you have your highs and you have your lows. So intimacy, I feel is developed when there is conflict. It's, when you know that, you know, this person sees your good and your bad side and what you would deem good or bad. I don't necessarily believe either that there's good emotions, bad emotions. Mm-hmm. It's just, it just is. 
uh, everything's neutral, you know, nothing has any inherent meaning to it other than the meaning that you assign to it. However, like these good and these bads, and you realize that, wow, this person, <laughs> this person right here just saw me do this thing. And so, and they're still around, you know, <laughs> like that's when like intimacy is like developed. It's also like being like opening of the heart space and allowing for people to come in and like bringing down the shield on both sides. And I feel like that's the most difficult part <laughs> to get to. And that takes time. Yeah. However, I, the more too that someone knows about themselves, I do a lot of journaling prompts. And I ask a, a bunch of different questions. The more that someone knows about themselves, the more that they're able to tell other people, to share parts of them with other people. However, people want to numb out or they want to distract themselves and they don't get to know themselves. And so intimacy is developed when you get intimate with you, when you okay. start learning about you and really going into the trenches and being like, okay, well, I'm working this shit out because if I don't, then I'm always going to be like this. Yeah. Because you're not accepting of yourself. So how can another person accept you when you set that energetic boundary already with yourself? Yeah. And so again, it comes to the acknowledgement and then it comes to the acceptance of like where you're at that, um, that I feel that intimacy really is developed. It's a very good, very good way to look at it. I never really looked at it that way, but it makes okay. complete and total sense. Mm. Yeah. Cause it's like, I, how can you share what you're feeling if you don't know what you're feeling? Yeah. It's, it's like, it sounds, it's common sense, but you make it sound so simple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well <yeah>. done. <laughs> easier, easier said than done. Well, you, I, I, I'm sure just by listening to you, anybody that is, you know, being coached by you or turns to you for, for your, your knowledge has to feel, I would imagine almost the improvement start immediately because you're very, very easy to talk to. You put it very simply, you, you're not intimidating. Um, you really just want to pull the best out of everybody. And you can, I can feel that just talking with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and I'll make sure everybody listening or watching that everything Ray Grillo possible will be linked up in the show notes below us. So you can contact her. You can talk to her. You can, uh, you know, research her and, and look into, you know, maybe having her as your coach, couples coach, individuals coach. I'll make sure it's all below us in the show notes because I can, I can imagine you're going to, you know, you're probably pretty busy. <laughs> I, uh, yes, I am pretty busy, especially with my little one. Um, he's usually typically here and I am so grateful for my in-laws, <laughs> you know, to help out and everything. However, I have been moving more towards doing a membership and mm -hmm. I've also noticed cause I'm on dating apps and stuff. Like for me recently, I'm going through, uh, my own sort of like breakup and stuff. And I, um, just noticed within, the dating apps and stuff is like, it's difficult because, you know, you're like, oh, okay, well, there's Tinder and then there's this and there's that, um, that people are like fed up. They're fed up with it. It's not fun. <laughs> and I created the Divine Kings and Queens Patreon that I have and Facebook community page. And I'm okay. hoping to develop um, an app which I have been developing an app, just getting it, like working out the kinks to where like, you know, the community of people who are like working on themselves can actually like find themselves. Okay. Uh, and so I'm working, I'm working towards doing more like higher scale things and helping more people out that way versus like one-on-one -on -one coaching. I still will do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, it's just like the value of it is like going higher <laughs> you know oh, no, i think it's great um, raise yeah. the standards yeah and um what were you what, what were you talking about with your your patreon what was that what was it patreon, called? So, uh kings and uh divine kings and queens what is that uh i do okay so like i think about for me is like you know a power couple and so when i everything that i do is like you know that you know the couples and i'm just i sat there and thought i was like well I have this queen energy, you know, 
or I have like this goddess energy. And so I want <laughs> someone beside me who is working towards something. I think about like, you know, that king and queen dynamic. It's like that power couple that is working towards something that is fulfilling some sort of purpose. And yeah, I believe yeah. that, yeah, like, you know, they're, you don't find relationship looking for a relationship. You find relationship striving for something better than yourself. And so when, you know, people are working on themselves and they're figuring out like, what is my purpose? What is my passion? What is my mission? Like, what, it, what do I want to do in life? You know, that is when, uh, that is when, when you look to your side and this, like, if there's people alongside of you, and especially if it's like the opposite sex or um, opposite energy, you know, feminine energy, whatever you're attracted to uh, alongside you, then that's sort of like who you would want to pick up, you know, okay. versus um, looking to get in a relationship just to be in a relationship. Okay. And uh, that's why I wanted to create the Divine Kings and Queens is for, you know, ambitious people who, you know, they want to contribute to the world and they want to work on themselves. And yet they also want a partner to do it alongside with. I like that. What a beautiful thought. What a beautiful concept. Yeah. It should be like that all the time, not just an upgrade. <laughs> we should all be like, <laughs> yeah. we'll get there. We'll get yeah. there. <laughs> so you you also mentioned, what was it? Uh, glow goddess? Goddess glow? Oh, I want to make sure I'm saying it. What, yeah. Now, what is that? You have all these things, your names and your titles. They just like sound mm -hmm. so fabulous. Well, I started Goddess Glow uh, back in, I think, 2021, and that's when I was just dealing with women, and um, I worked with, uh, I think, you know Desiree? Yeah, because yeah. Desiree introduced us, yeah. yeah. So when I started my podcast, I called it the Goddess Glow podcast, because then I was, like, helping women exclusively, and then I also have products, aromatherapy products, which I've used... For myself on healing and doing a lot of uh, sexual healing. Um, it's helped me reframe things. And so Goddess Glow and Goddess Glow Collection is for, which I'm transitioning the Goddess Glow Collection to be for couples. Okay. And um, yeah, I just always envisioned too, like my highest and best self, like was just that goddess energy, like bringing more like healthy feminine energy to the world. The Goddess Glow? Mm -hmm. And that's all of your scents and your products. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so I'm all into that because I'm, I'm going to hop on that right away. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a bunch of oils. Um, I have a bunch of essential oils and I have oils that are infused with different blends that I've created that are infused with crystals that are roll-ons. I also have a uh, yoni steam. Uh, I don't know if you know what yoni steams are. It's like yeah. a herbal tea. Uh, that's where you steam your vagina with it, your yoni, and you sit over it. And it's like a healing thing. I see it more like, you know, it does have some physical aspects that help. However, I've used it energetically wise. Like I envision um, more so like the steam healing my sacral chakra versus okay. however, and then I also have like a yoni oil and then a, like a massage oil that has like the same sense together that help, you know, couples have better sex in that way as well, because aromatherapy is such a, a healing, it's just like another way to do some sort of healing and it's helped me along my journey. So I, I love this. And you've mentioned your podcast twice. So can you mm -hmm. tell everybody about your podcast? Uh, yeah, sure. So my podcast, I, it's been, it's like my baby right now. <laughs> and it's been like, um, just like my joy because I love like how I'm pretty, you do. Like I love interviewing people who are making a difference in the world. I love being inspired by other people. And so when I find someone who inspires me, I get them on my podcast. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's an inspirational. It's mm -hmm. telling an inspiring story, inspiring business or, or, or what have you. Yeah, I'm sharing my insights that I have in my life, um, being more intentional, like living more intentionally. And yeah. 
that okay i love all this positive you've got queens and you're a goddess and you're mm -hmm. helping and it's strength and power and femininity and i love this this is incredible i wish there was more of this in the world mm -hmm. well yeah i uh i i mean i look around and i see more and more of it yeah i do i do feel that there has been a shift and i do Maybe. feel that things are going to be better. That's just like, you know, my perspective. Um, I know though, like, you know, not to be ignorant, however, um, of like, you know, things that aren't so great. However, that's why I strive again to, to work as hard as I do and to create the things that I do so that, you know, other people are alongside me to like help because anything that you do and you don't, if you don't have people, other people involved in a vision or a dream, I, me personally, I don't feel like it's a worth, it's a worthy dream. The support around. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. You're just kind of incredible. Now with all of this, all of this that you're doing, which is remarkable from front to back is remarkable. You also, and it was a word I hadn't heard until our in intro call, was intuitive empath. Yes. Can you dive into that? Because I remember I said to you, what is that? Mm -hmm. Something I'd never heard of. I, it's something I have heard of, but I've never heard that term. Can you explain that? Yeah. Um, so after my husband passed, I dived, well, going back even more, when I was a teenager, I did things like tarot cards and was really into like Wicca and witchcraft. Um, and then now when you say witchcraft, witchcraft, and it, you know, if you don't know, just sounds scary, but it, yeah. you're not talking about it in a scary way. No, not in a scary okay. way. I mean, it can be, it just depends on the person and their intent, okay. you know, like, however, like words are spells. Like when you go and like flip someone off and you're like cursing them out, you know, that's sort of sending bad energy. And so it's just like an energy exchange. That's like the way that I see it now is what is your intent? Like, what are you doing? Um, however, there's a lot of people who practice witchcraft that are, they don't do it because karma, you know, or uh, because they want to be a loving person. <laughs> and um, so I wouldn't necessarily say it's like a scary thing because, I mean, that's what Hollywood has projected exactly. into your um, religion or what have you. However, I mean, I see it as just, I like to be around plants. I like to heal people with the plants and I light some candles and meditate. <laughs> that's okay. like, that's what I see it as. Okay. Our intuitive empath um, is essentially like a psychic. However, I'm more empathic in the way that, so an empath is someone who can pick up someone else's energy. They're extremely empathic. And typically the way that empaths come about is that they grew up in a chaotic environment or in an environment where they had to sort of guess or anticipate what was going to happen next or anticipate how their parental figure or whomever was around was feeling or going to act. And so our nervous system sort of goes into like hyperdrive and everyone has like an energetic field. Um, everyone's always projecting some sort of energy out. I, um, of course, developed that sort of skill uh, through my childhood and also honing in and realizing that, you know, I feel on a deep level what other people are feeling. And it's the way that, you know, my neurons just mirror other pe like people's neurons and like what they're going through, I'm experiencing as well. Um, intuitive is... Uh, getting in, in touch or in tune with that part of your brain where you just know what's going to happen. Like um, intuitive, like I'm able, like, like a psychic, like I just know, um, I just know things that I don't know. Why I know? Like, I know. Why do I know this? Why yeah. do I know exactly what's going to happen right now? Yeah. yeah. And everyone, um, everyone has intuition, you know, and everyone has some sort of level of empathy um, and I believe everyone is a psychic at some point or degree. It just depends if you exercise that sort of muscle. Um, I say intuitive empath because 
there's different types of psychics and also I'm more so um I'm not like a fortune teller or anything I'm not gonna go and tell you like this is gonna happen and it's gonna suck or like you know project the future so you don't do readings and things like that yeah well I mean I, I I still do readings however it's more like you're gonna meet so and so and then this is gonna happen and this is gonna happen like I don't get dive into there so much I say intuitive empath because I more so specialize in blockages and so say you have a goal and you have a love life goal and you want to meet this person like what is blocking you like what things are blocking you from meeting this person like what is your wall and I'm able to help decipher what are people's walls and yeah, I do get images and certain things or things that are holding people back. Um, and so that's why I say intuitive empath, because again, I get in tune with the person and intuitively wise, like, okay, what's, what's coming up to, what is my intuition telling me? What is like spirit okay. telling me about this person and what messages do I have for this person that either they're ignoring because they don't want to listen, you know, because the brain, you know, mm-hmm. can think what it wants to, or you can shun away. <laughs> and yeah, so yeah. sometimes, or a lot of times people come to me because they don't know how to shut off the voices in their head just to like be still and listen to what their intuition is telling them. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. So yeah, I do more so specialize in this is your blockage that I know it intuitively, like when I meet, so when I open myself up or like when I meet someone and I'm coaching them, I can typically already tell where they're at in their journey of healing or like what guidance to give them because I just feel it. And then asking questions, then it gets more solidified. However, I just know like what their blockages are already. Yeah. Okay. And, and what you do, you could do how do you do, is it over the phone? Is it in person? Is it, is it like this? How, how does, how do your sessions or your, 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 your time with these people that you're working with, how do you do that? Well, a lot of the times it's like, you know, reference, like I get a lot of referrals. Um, sometimes I've had people come to my house and usually typically that would just be a Zoom. So okay. I'm looking at you and there's like these little light beams coming out all over, just shooting out all over the world. <laughs> yeah yeah I mean uh, too like it's either like you can open it up or like close it as well yeah I have to tell you Ray you are as remarkable as I thought you were going to be when we had the intro call you truly are such a kind gentle open heart human being light uh, ball of energy it, it's just been my pleasure to get to know you even deeper and to hear more about what you do. And then there's a lot uh, just to just to make the world a better place, to make people better, elevate everybody, whether it be the family unit, relationships, individuals. You're really doing a great, great thing. And I'm I'm glad I met you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Is there anything else that you're planning? <laughs> you have a lot, a lot of transitioning <laughs> going on, but I, I can know, imagine uh, there's going to be no stopping you in anything. No, um, no, right now, I mean, I've been really like doing a lot of content creation and working on um, doing more of a like classes. I've been really geared on creating a community of people uh, who, you know, resonate with the message that I have and um, creating a lot of content around that like going forth on that. I do have um, my book that I am finishing up, which is oh. How to Heal from Heartbreak. And um, so I've been really working on that one. And I have another book too that I've been writing for forever. So when that one, <laughs> when that one comes out, you know, that's more of like a goddess glow, like my story of stuff, how, are the, how to heal from heartbreak. I, I like that. Out. When do you expect the first book to come out? How to Heal from Heartbreak, that one by the end of the month. Um, oh, wow. So it's just right around the corner. Yeah, just right around the corner. And where would somebody be able to find that? Is that going to be on your website, on Amazon? or? It is going to be on, the plan is to get it on Amazon. If I could get it on there by the end of the month, awesome. 
If not, then it will be on my website or, or like a like a PDF form that people can order through on okay. that way. I am working though on getting it on Amazon where Amazon you're able to either order it on Kindle or get it printed out. It's fabulous. I can't, I, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to watch for it because I'm going to order it. <laughs> <laughs> I just love anything you have to say. So I'm just going to take it in like a sponge. And again, like I told you earlier, everybody who's watching or listening, um, all the links to everything that Ray has talked about, her different sites, her, 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 the products that she was selling, the book, potential book, the website, all of that will be below us in the show notes. And um, so you can get to know her the way I have and it'll, ah, you're just so incredible. And I'm so thankful that you took the time out of your crazy busy schedule to be on Shannon Confidential today. I truly appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It was awesome to be on the other side because my first time being on a, being interviewed versus interviewing. Oh, well, I am honored that it was on Shannon Confidential. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And you just seem like a beam of light as well. Like, I'm excited um, to create a connection with you and to create this friendship, you know? Like, now I feel like I have someone. Because I just feel your energy, and I feel like you have a lot, too, that is probably similar to me. And um, oh, Thank you. That's a compliment. Yeah.